Hello guys, welcome to this new video. So this is going to be question 5 in the May 2023 time zone 1 paper 2. So in this first question, we are asked to determine these different properties. These are no, no longer in the syllabus. So we don't learn about quarks or the weak nuclear force. Maybe it's just worth mentioning that the this box would not have to be ticked as the electrons do not interact with the strong nuclear force the strong nuclear force is just in between protons and neutrons to help keep the nucleus together but other than that this question is no longer required and then we are told the following data for the atomic masses for a fusion reaction and we need to show that the energy released is about 18 mega electron volts so we're going to need to use the e is equal to the mass defect times the times c squared so we need to see what the difference in mass is of the reaction from the reactants to the products and we're going to need to multiply that by the speed of light squared so if we want to calculate this mass defect then what we need to do is just look at the mass of all the reactants and subtract it from the mass of all the products so if we do that we see have this one and this one on the reactants, so that will be 2.0141 plus 3.0160. So this is the reactant side. And from this, we need to subtract the mass of the products. So we have the helium, which is 4.0026. And then we also need the mass of the neutron, which is going to be 1.008665. And this is in the data booklet. So the IB doesn't provide it here, but they expect you to check the data booklet for this value. So this is going to be 0 0.018835 atomic mass units. And so if we're going to apply the formula now, E is equal to delta M C squared, we need to convert this atomic mass units into some form of energy. And uh, the easiest way to do that is to use the constant that uh, one atomic mass unit is the same as 931.5 mega electron volts per C squared. So this is just a conversion factor that we can all often use when we have atomic mass units and then we want to calculate energy. So all we have to do is multiply this uh, mass defect by this constant. And then we still need to multiply it by the uh, speed of light squared to because if we multiply this by by three times ten to the eight c squared, then you see the the c squares will cancel out and we'll end up with units of only mega electron volts, which is the unit of energy we need here. And so if we do this, we get seventeen and a half mega electron volts, which is approximately. 18 mega electron volts should be big m because it's not milli electron volts but mega all right and then we need to estimate the specific energy of hydrogen by finding the energy produced when 0 0.4 kilograms of this and 0 0.6 kilograms of that undergo fission so we kind of have to know what the specific energy formula is as i believe this is not provided in the data booklet and well, specific energy is just a number that shows how much energy is released per kilogram or per mass. That's why specific. So this usually means per mass. And so the specific energy will just be the heat released divided by the mass. And so we have some like joule per kilogram value. So we get that for one kilogram, how much energy is released. And so from the previous part, we know the energy released. 17 and a half mega electron volts and we also know that in the data booklet there is another constant that we will have to use which is that one atomic mass unit is 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms so this is how we will go from the atomic mass units to kilograms so we just need to plug into this equation so q over m and then we're going to want we're, we're going to need joule per kilogram as that is the units of of the specific energy 
So what we're going to need to do is convert this 17 and a half mega electron volts into joules. So first we convert it to electron volts. This is just 17 and a half times 10 to the 6 electron volts. And then we convert electron volts to joules. And we know that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So this many electron volts is just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So this was this is the energy that is released. And now we need to see what mass uh, produced this energy output. And so we need we're told the mass of, of the 21H and the 31H. And so we just need to um, see the mass of of uh, one one of these. So like we see that 21H here is 2.0141. And the mass of the other one was 3.0160. So this is an atomic mass units, but we need to convert this into kilograms, which we do with this relationship. So we still need to multiply by 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27 to convert to kilograms. And then if we do this calculation, we will get that this is 3.40 times 10 to the 14 joule per kilogram. Yes. All right. And here the ratios are pretty much the same. That's why we can just use this as it's like this is a 2 to 3 ratio. And so is so are these two 2 to 3 ratio. And then we are told that it is hoped that nuclear fusion can be used for commercial production of energy. Outline two difficulties for the production of nuclear fusion. Well, one of the biggest problems is that the input energy we need to do this is larger than the output energy. Or I mean like the useful output energy. So it's not very efficient so to say and i mean another one would be that very high temperatures are needed so that's also very hard to produce it has to be like a couple uh, hundred million celsius degrees which is like very hard to produce and to maintain for a long period of time so just making something that hot is already difficult enough but we also need we would also need to keep it at that temperature for a longer period of time which is uh, quite difficult and then one advantage of using nuclear fusion over nuclear fission well there's more energy released is released in nuclear fusion another one could be that no radioactive waste is produced so this is also a advantage and then we are told that tritium is unstable and decays into an isotope of helium by beta minus decay with a half-life of 12.3 12, 12 years state the nuclear number of the helium isotope that the 31H decays into. Well, let's see what the reaction would look like. So we have this and it decays into some isotope of helium through beta minus decay and we know that beta minus particle has is like this. We know this is the form and then there's also a uh, anti-neutrino but that's, no, that's of no importance here in the question, as that has both 0, 0. So we need to see what the nuclear number is for this uh, helium isotope. And what we just need to keep in mind is that the mass number and the proton number must be conserved on both sides. So the, the, there must be the same, num same number of mass number and the same proton number on both sides. So we, first can, we can first look at the mass number we have three on the left side and at the moment we have zero on the right side so we need a three on the helium and then we just do the same for the proton number so we have one here 
minus 1 here, so we're going to need 2 here. It's 2 minus 1 will give us 1. So the answer is 3. As the nucleon number is just the top number here, that's just the mass number. Nucleons are protons plus neutrons, which, which is the mass number. Yes. And then uh, this Feynman diagram is also in the old syllabus, so we don't need that anymore. And then we need to estimate the fraction of tritium remaining after one year. So what we were told is that the half-life is 12.3 years. I believe at the start of the question, yes, 12.3 years. So we're going to need to use the formula that uh, n is equal to n0 times e to the minus lambda times t. But uh, we're not really, we don't know what lambda is, the decay constant. So we somehow need to calculate this. Now there are two ways. You either remember the relationship between lambda and the half-life, or you have to quickly um, like prove what the formula is during the exam, which I will do right now because it's not so difficult and it's important to know how to do this as well. So half-life is just defined as the time needed for the number of uh, nuclei to half. So the time needed for them to half. So we know if we just use this formula, we know that we need half of the initial number of nuclei here. So on the left we'll have n0 over 2 and then the right side will be the same. And then this t we can label as like t half as this is the half-life when this many nuclei remain. So we see that the n zeros will cancel out. So we are just left with one half is equal to e to the minus lambda t half. And then we somehow need to solve for this t half as that's what we want to figure out. And well, whenever we have some exponent here, we usually want to take the logarithm. And since here we have an e, it's the best if we take a natural logarithm, as then we'll have something like this. And well, we know that from the logarithm properties, we know that the exponent inside the logarithm can always be brought in front. So this is just a property that is worth knowing. So what we'll be left with is this. And then ln e. But we know ln e is just 1. As an actual law just asks what power do we need to raise this base to to get the number here. So we need to do e to the power of 1 will give us e. So our equation is going to be ln 1 half is equal to minus lambda t half like this. And then we can simplify a little bit more. As we know, this 1 half is just uh, 2 to the minus 1. And so here again, we can just bring out the negative, And then when we bring it out, it's going to cancel with the other negative. So the final formula we are left with is that lambda times t half is equal to ln 2. And so from this, we can calculate the decay constant as we know the half-life, so the decay constant is just going to be ln2 divided by t half. So that's going to be ln2 over 12.3. This will be 0 0.05635 per year, or just a year to the minus 1. Like this. And now, well, now we have everything. We just need to plug into the formula. We're not asked for any specific number of nuclei. We're just asked for the fraction. So we want to see how much remains. So what we're going to need to do is just divide over by the initial number. And this fraction will just tell us like what fraction is remaining after the given time. So this is equal to e to the minus lambda times t. And then we just plug in the values. 0 0.05635 and then one year we just plug in one you just got to make sure that the units of the decay constant and the time are the same so if our decay constant would be like in seconds or minutes then our t we plug into here would also have to be in like seconds or minutes corresponding to the units of the decay constant as in that way the units will cancel each other out and so we'll have no units in the exponent anymore 
as what we should get here is simply a number and that number is going to be 0 0.945 so this is already correct or we can say 94.5 percent so this is how much remain all right then so this was a uh, question five i hope it was uh, helpful and uh, see you in the next question